So probably we can start. Uh, my name is Gennady Chursev. Today uh, I welcome you on the topic of automation of the automation using ChatGPT. So <laughs> let me start the uh, description who I am. So uh, I'm QA engineer with experience with more than 10 years. I ex staff automation quality assurance engineer at Grid Dynamics here in Serbia. Also ex a Google contractor. And uh, the funny thing here is that uh, this was uh, five years ago, and it was my first commerce project when I uh, worked with automation using TypeScript, the language that I'm going to use today for all examples using ChatGPT for automation. So let's start. And let me start just with brief overview what we are going to check today. So the first thing is that I will tell you more about of tasks that usual quality assurance engineer and automation or even regular one are faced on the work. So you will know more, maybe uh, it will reveal you some additional things to automate except the automation of generation tests. Also, we will talk more about uh, prompt engineering because it's also a part of communication with generative AI. Uh, such as ChatGPT. So there are some best practices. Uh, and I also recently passed several courses on LinkedIn learning. So I can reveal something from that courses. Also ChatGPT itself in their documentation also revealing some tips for prompt engineering. So maybe it will be useful as a step for generating such requests. Also, uh, I will share information how actually to start with automation generation of such tests. So it includes several steps, starting from generating testing framework to actual of writing an execution test and then improvement of that test. Also, I will uh, give you a short demo. So it will be a workshop. So I will show you real code examples, how to do that, how I use it using from Postman perspective, just sending a request and getting response, how I incorporated it to framework. And after all, uh, I'm going to reveal some uh, future plans, how to and what to add additionally for your framework so it will be more useful in real situation on real products. So let's start with the first one, with overview of automation engineering task. And I'm usually separating it to three uh, parts. So first one is a manual testing then automation and some common tasks that could be both from automation and manual or maybe something different. For example, uh, there is several roles. Uh, for example, in my previous company, you can be manual engineer, automation, and you can be in a role, for example, of QA lead, manager, and etc. So even as a manager, you can use ChatGPT or, or other uh, generative AI to increase your productivity as an engineer. So let's firstly reveal what task we can automate using generative AI uh, from manual tasks. So usually as a manual engineer, you need to work with a lot of documentations. For example, you have a task, you have some endpoint of microservices written in Java, there is a swagger or maybe Postman collection. And the first task is just to create a checklist or test cases, uh, I don't know, uh, have some agreement with other team, with developers, with uh, your product manager, with business analyst and your users. And after you defined your test cases, then you can go to execution of your manual tests. And this part of uh, generating all the test documentation, including test list, checklist, uh, and etc., could be uh, automated using Genetify. In automation, usually it's just regular way. It's generating scripts. You can use several languages. It could be TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, whatever. So you're doing that in some kind of testing frameworks usually. So this all generated test has some specific structure and architecture. You can uh, usually separate your test data from your scripts, maybe there will be some util class and etc. You can use already existing testing framework. For example, today I will use Playwright and will incorporate my solution there. 
but you can create your own using different technologies, using uh, dependencies. For example, it's mostly depending, is it UI automation, API automation, mobile, or something else. And then there is a lot of common tasks, both for manual and automation engineer. For example, when you find the defect after you executed manual on, or automation case, then you probably need to find root cause of the issue. If it's automation, you, maybe you need to fix your automation script. Maybe you need to create a Jira ticket with a defect to your development team. So they are gonna fix this issue and et cetera. So this common task also could be automated. Today, we're going to focus only on one area of automation. We will automate uh, generating scripts for automation using TypeScript and Playwright. And we're going to uh, automate execution and even self-healing of that tasks. Okay, now let's move on to some theory. So during all that things, I will need to use a prompt. And it also refers us to some kind of new language that we are going to use to interact with ChatGPT. It's prompt engineering. So prompt, it's just an instruction in a specific format that we need to use to ask ChatGPT to answer our questions or simply execute our instructions. And we can also define additional things to increase quality of our prompts. Uh, on this slide, there is a QR code to a Google Doc that will be, that already populated with examples. For example, uh, example of questions, instructions, all types of prompts. There is uh, examples of how to generate a testing framework how to generate a scenario. And this Google Doc also includes some useful links that will be used for other parts of this uh, webinar. So now let's move on. Uh, and now we're gonna check our prompts. So uh, mainly there is a four types. It starts with question and instruction. And question and instructions is our uh, the most vital part because it's mandatory. You're either asking ChatGPT to do something or you are giving instruction. And questions could be something like, please return me uh, possible languages to write automation. It's just a regular question. Or you can give instruction, return me all languages that as quality assurance engineer I can use for automation. Uh, if you are going to increase quality of your prompts, then you probably will add uh, some optional part it's uh, input data or it's examples. So in input data, it's mostly about uh, adding additional information. So I can firstly return back, like I'm staff qualifications engineer with 10 years of experience. I work with Java, I work with TypeScript. In university, sometimes I use C-sharp programming languages. I mostly work on web and API testing. Please return me back uh, the most interesting new language that I need to learn to increase, uh, for example, chances to be hired to a new company. So in here, I added a lot of input data, but I still need to use questions or instructions to give exact things to do. So input data without question instruction, uh, probably useful. An example, so I can give example of, uh, for example, test case or scenario and ask ChatGPT to create the same for other case. For example, it will be, I'm sending you uh, an actual test case. Please generate uh, the same structured test, for example, for another scenario. Firstly, it was uh, creating an object. Now, please return it for changing and deleting the object. So ChatGPT will use that as an example. Now let's move on to some tips for prompt engineer. So first thing here is pretend that it's a junior QA. So this is from, from my side. When I'm working with ChatGPT to generate automation tests or test cases or whatever else, I'm pretending that ChatGPT is just a newcomer to my project. I need to behave the same way how I will work with a new engineer in my team. So first of all, I will do some welcome uh, email. I will explain who I am, that I'm engineer, uh, years of experience, what's my main stack, what my tech stack, what is my main goal, and etc. 
Then, as usual, when it's just a new engineer on your project, you probably need to firstly give some uh, onboarding documents, like this is a folder for generation test. This is main documentation of our requirements that you can use uh, as a re required part that needed to be done to tests. This is example of a correctly working scenario. This is the structures that you need to follow to generate the test and et cetera. And after that, for example, as other part of the team that used, for example, Jira, when you're providing instructions, more, more, more like, okay, please create automation for this endpoint. You need to follow these guidelines. You need to put it into our playwright framework. You need to use TypeScript. We will have a pull request and et cetera. So you're revealing the whole information in the same way as you will do it for uh, just regular engineer, the same way you are doing it for ChatGPT. So it will include some kind of background, who you are and what you need to do. Your uh, tech stack, examples of uh, already working code, some limitations and etc. Now let's move on and uh, go with one by one with more details. First, after pretending that it's junior QA, it's adding input. So in that way, uh, the first thing that you are going to use and maybe the first uh, prompt that you are starting each conversation, you first add in information of your context, of your background, and it's pretty vital because uh, the conversation with ChatGPT using API and using UI working that way that the first message will be uh, sent to ChatGPT with every later messages. So it means that it will be used. And it's better to start with some limitation, etc., from the first message. So in real life, when you, for example, using API, the less tokens you will be used, the less you will pay for that. So it's vital for you. Next part is experiment and examples. So for examples, we already know that we can just define what we are going to use, provide an example. So ChatGPT will uh, stick to that and will work the same way as you doing that. Uh, but experimenting here is that, first of all, you can start with uh, the simplest prompt. It will return you an answer. Maybe the answer will be not ideal and you can uh, increase you know, quality of that. So you can experiment, start with something simple, then you can add additional prompts, you can uh, re revise and update your first initial one, and et cetera. So experimenting with the types of prompting, you can ask a question, you can give an instruction and combining it in every uh, possible uh, possibilities like question, instruction, plus uh, test data, plus some uh, examples, first example or first you will put some input data and etc. So after some experimenting that you will use for prompt engineering, probably you will find something uh, maybe ideal for specific scenario. Maybe it will be just rare chances that something will happen wrong. Also, when you are sending some requests to ChatGPT, you can highlight several keywords. Uh, for example, uh, when I'm initially sending information that you need to return me back working code solution for some automation tests, I'm highlighting keyword that please do not send any comments without double slash, because otherwise that code execution will be highlighted in EDE as not working because it will be just plain text without comment assigned. So I need to highlight it because sometimes ChatGPT uh, he's checking your prompt and finding that some words are more vital than another. So increase the uh, need to actually use specific keyword can be used by just the simplest highlighting the word. Next, you can encourage or limit creativity. There is a, even separate things in APIs that you can use. It's called temperature. Temperature needs to be adjusted or decreased based on what you actually need. You can uh, increase creativity of responses from ChatGPT, or you can, I don't know, limit it. 
And uh, one thing here is that when you are sending the same request to ChatGPT several times, usually you will receive uh, random results each time. So it will be unique each time because he will creatively find a new way how to answer on your question. If you will send it 10 times, maybe it will be that 50% of chance, it will be completely different solution. But as an engineer, you can also have a way how to disable that. So uh, as I'm aware uh, on ChatGPT official documentation, maybe in beta, maybe it's already working. There is a way how to put a seed of your uh, request and using that seed, response of that request always will be the same, but it's depending on what you actually needed. Sometimes I even prefer uh, a lot of creativity because I will use self-healing mechanism and I need several attempts to fix the same issue with different approaches. So for me, it's good that we have a way how to even increase creativity of responses. And the last thing here, it's a check for amb ambiguity. So if one of your term could have different meaning. For example, you are using some uh, library that if you're doing the first shot, like zero shot, and you don't give any background of what you're going to do, maybe ChatGPT will find that something else has the same term, terminology, and will use it uh, differently. So in that way, you can either give more background of the task, or you can just, uh, I don't know, write down exact uh, long name of the library with some context. So ChatGPT will return the correct variant. Uh, also in the Google Docs that I revealed, there is uh, examples of every uh, types of prompts and link for prompt engineering part from uh, official documentation of ChatGPT. Now let's move on. And now we're going actually to automation already, but in more like overview of that. So uh, basically when we wanted to uh, start automation, we need to create a testing framework. And in that part, previously I worked on a Java project. So I mostly work with Java language, with Java based frameworks. For example, for API, I used REST Assured library. And uh, it's maybe not the ideal uh, option for what I wanted to do here. And I prefer to find something uh, uh, different and also try to have some kind of uh, investigation. Is it possible to create a new testing framework from scratch just to asking question to ChatGPT? So I prefer to use a new um, framework for me. It's called Playwright. It has support for TypeScript, Java, JavaScript, and maybe even some other languages. But I prefer to use TypeScript because maybe it's not my first uh, time when I'm using TypeScript. I used it five years ago, but uh, it's not my main language. So it's good to practice and try ChatGPT solutions on a language that I'm not an expert. So this is actually a way how I can increase my productivity to work together with ChatGPT on something that I'm not an expert, but overall I have experience as quality assurance engineer with some different framework, different solution on a different language. So uh, prompts that I use for creating and testing frameworks are available on that Google doc. And also uh, I used uh, this scheme. So I asked ChatGPT uh, questions, how to create it. Uh, I provided, uh, asked about steps to uh, reproduce creation of that framework. But I also tried to uh, Google uh, official documentation and I compared how in official documentation, there are guides for creating that framework with the guides that actually ChatGPT returned to me, and it was almost identical. So I can create testing framework, uh, for example, as Playwright, both ways, just for official documentation or with ChatGPT, it's almost identical and both ways are working. Then uh, I need to generate basic tests. So first of all, it will be example that I will use uh, later in uh, ChatGPT. And also I just need to check that my framework is working. So I will show you that basic test. And I also use ChatGPT 
there is some uh, prompts how to do that and I will show it to you. And the last part is to improve the result. So my first generated test uh, didn't pass successfully because it was uh, automation of API. It was just simple get uh, request and I checking response. So the first one I'm checking status code that it should be 200. And then I'm checking uh, response body. And that response body uh, intentionally have issues. So I tested the service that sometimes randomly generating errors or returning some uh, uh, incorrect data. So that's why it will be ideal to practice this with ChatGPT because we will just uh, work and interact with intentionally broken solution. And this is the way when ChatGPT can try to fix this one. And in proving the result, it's also the way how I'm going to implement self-healing and self-testing mechanism. And from that on, now let's move on to actually uh, our workshop part, when I will reveal some code, Postman collection and etc. You can also uh, do the same job. There is a, another QR code that will, will redirect you to a GitHub account. This is uh, my test project, play, write, and TypeScript. And you need to use not the uh, main branch, you need to go to GPT branch because on even on that branch, there is additional methods that I will reveal you today. So now let's move on. And firstly, I will show you a uh, Postman collection. So uh, in my uh, implementation of uh, chat GPT generation automation test, firstly, I even used not API. So I used the regular way. So. This is how it look like from API side. I need the exact endpoint. I need to have post method. And I'm sending in the body, first one, I'm defining which model I'm, model I'm gonna use. I'm using uh, the stable version of GPT-3.5 uh, and I'm sending a message. So this is actual me message that you will probably send using UI and a role, it differs from several ways. It could be user, it could be system, or it could be assistant. Assistant means that it's a, it's a response from chat GPT. User, it's your questions or instructions, or you can also uh, create it from system. And it's mainly for your input data or examples that you are sending before you will start actually uh, putting some kind of questions or instructions. But how it looks like, for example, for a regular part when we are speaking about uh, UI. So on UI, when I wanted to create the first test, I created something like that. So, hey, could you please generate simple guest API test? I even specified that I need to import test expect from Playwright. So I defined which libraries I'm going to use. I also specified that uh, please do not use any other libraries, that it should be only API calls without any UI steps, uh, that I have base URL, and I even provided uh, the value of that base URL that will be for every uh, get, post, HTTP methods, and et cetera. And I specified exact endpoint for that get method. After that, ChatGPT told me that he will gonna use Playwright and additional library Axios. Uh, he also provided me how to install that additional library. Uh, but I mentioned that library here, so it's not actually uh, have any conflict with uh, my uh, uh, instruction to do not use any other libraries. So it's okay. Then he generated the whole code. So he imported several libraries. There is my base URL. There is my pain point for get. ChatGPT also generated a simple test. So this test is sending get HTTP method for a specific endpoint. We are uh, storing it as a response. Then we are checking status code of our response and some additional things like, for example, we're checking some properties because ChatGPT doesn't know what will be the result of uh, this uh, superhero endpoint. So he only can predict that probably you will have name, 
power stat and etc. So uh, it's one hundred percent chance that this line of code will fail because we didn't specify what we actually have as a return result in the body of that get method. So additionally, we can add it in some other uh, prompts. And here's the first part that, for example, if we will copy this code to actually library, I can even do it for now. So let's go here somewhere. Let's, for example, just create a empty file. I will copy all the code, post it here. And as you see here, we have uh, red highlights that it's not working because we cannot actually get result of status as a method. It's just a field, so we need to fix it like that. And after that, it will work. But chat DPT made a mistake. So here we can ask. So we performed it manually. We found an issue and now we're checking. Response status is highlighted as red. So probably it should be fixed. Could you fix the test? So we are asking question. And firstly, we're pr providing some input on why we are thinking that it's broken. After that, uh, ChatGPT returned correct variant and now it's working. So if we will do that, if we will paste it here, now it's working the same as we fixed it manually. I can even uh, execute this test. Okay, let's do it like that. Just save it. Once it's saved, now we have the, this execution button and I can execute this test. And now you see, even though that uh, there is no compile type issues, it still faced a runtime issue. We have an assertion here as expectation and we have an error. So the error here is that we expected the, that there is a name, but actually we don't have it. We have only full name here. So we need to fix that. And we're sending it one more time. So we're sending that we, we got an error, we received the value. So now ChatGPT actually know what's our expected JSON file that we are going to retrieve for our get method. After that, uh, ChatGPT will generate one more time and it's actually nothing uh, useful. So even though that, that we asked how to fix that, he didn't actually was able to fix the issue. So nothing was corrected. We have still errors like power stats. Now the issue, he fixed only full name, but we, we still have power stats. So we're asking to fix it one more time. He thinking, okay, now it should be different. And he still returned our power stats. He even removed full name. So this is also not a good solution. And I asked it one more time. So there is no power stat property at all. Please check JSON response and correct it with examples above. So I send examples of our JSON one more time. He sent me for clarification. And now he returned me like more correct variant. I checked, I asked him to check all expected JSON because now it's only full name and that full name is Dr. Strange, but he didn't check any other fields. And after that, when I asked him several times to follow the JSON structure. He created me something like that. And I asked him, good job. So I told him that now it's working correctly. So if I will copy paste it right now, post it here, save and execute. Okay, now the scenario passed. But as you see, so to fix that scenario, and initially generated and to follow everything. So the scenario is actually passing. I use some kind of seven prompts. So the first one is initial prompt. Then I ask several times to fix several issues. And a lot of time I ask him to check all JSON uh, fields. So uh, automation of that means that uh, usually when we are working with that solution, uh, we can automate our additional prompts to chat GPT. So in that way, we're not going to uh, manually check the result and fix that and copy paste it from chat GPT. So this is our goal for today. 
how we are going to do that. So now let's remove back to our API. So because we can just send our request here and it actually will work. So if I will send after some time, it will return a result. So in response of our chat GPT, we have some identification. We have an object that it's a result from chat, our model and specific agent of our model. And we have choices. So choices, it's actually a response. And here could be several choices, but usually it's single one. And the most important part is that we have an answer from ChatGPT. It's called assistant and content. Actually, it's our message. Uh, we also have some utility information. For example, uh, using API, we're actually paying for each token. So now we see that we used this number of tokens. And it, now we can calculate how much it will cost for us. Uh, this was a just simple way. Now we wanted to do it with the system and the same user. And now we're actually asking to generate a code base, the same as we did from UI part. And this is an example. So sometimes it's not working <laughs> because we are using a stable version of GPT, but the stable version is the cheapest one. And sometimes there is some kind of queue or latency. And sometimes it's just timeout issue. We cannot get uh, the results more than in a half a minute. And it's like failed. But now let's try it one more time. Hope that it will work. <laughs> so from my calculation, it's usually, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds for average. But sometimes it's not working. So if it's not working, you can just send it one more time. Okay, it's worked and it was 24 seconds. So it's stable result for us. Now we have the code and we can copy it and post it in the same file as we did before. Uh, it's actually not, not, not the best variant here, but there is a uh, way how to hack it. We can post it, for example, here in JSON and call beautify. Uh, yeah, it's not helped, but okay. So in that way, we can fix it manually. So it will be something like that. Like that, and etc. So after some time, we will actually do the same job as we did before. I will not do it right now completely because uh, in automation I already did that and it's doing that job automatically for me. So how to do that? So first of all, we need to move our execution of uh, API of ChatGPT and move it to framework itself. So for that, I created a page called, let me check, in the steps, GPT steps. So here we have a lot of utils information, but for now we need only one uh, function. It's called send simple message. We are sending our message and we have the same request body as it was here before. So we're sending model, our message and temperature. This is a, a regular one, but if you want, you can increase it. It will increase creativity or you can decrease. Then you will have, um, okay, the same results each time without creative results. Uh, here I'm also using post method, I'm sending request body. And for all interaction with ChatGPT, I also did told you that we need our API key because uh, it's not for free. You need to have an account and it also costs you some money each time. And I also added some additional user information. Like for example, I need to wait one minute because sometimes it, if it will be only half a minute, sometimes it's failing, so I just increase it. And I will fail if status code will be not 200 because otherwise it probably will be the same issue I, as I showed you here. So it will be 500 with something like bad, bad gateway or etc. It means that just for this agent, he was not able to finish uh, my request. Also, I'm checking uh, 
response as JSON file. There is some logs that I disabled for now. And I'm getting our choices, message, and content that I showed you before. So we're going choices, message, and content that this is a test. And we wanted to, to store it as an answer. We are logging it and returning that answer. Now, if we wanted to use it from framework, we need to actually uh, put it somewhere. And I created a method called API generate test here. And uh, the simplest way, this simplest test, that we are setting timeout, but it's mostly a uh, need for play right because uh, there is some default value, I don't know, maybe one minute or 10 minutes or something like that. And if it will not uh, pass successfully in that time, it will be failed only by timeout. So I increased for some reason. And here we are sending, say, this is a test. And that's all. So we are not doing a lot of information here. If we will execute it, it will do the same job as we did for Postman. So this is a for simplest thing. Now let's move on to something more difficult. We had uh, our second example when we had a system. And in that system, I'm sending something like behave like automation query sessions engineer. Your tech stack is TypeScript Playwright. Your main goal is to write a paid test. I'm sending some base uh, URL for our test, and it should be only API calls without any UI stack. So uh, I'm doing the same here. I'm putting system system message just as a variable here, and also I'm putting user message that could be different time to time. But system message just for our case, it's always the same, but because it's just a precondition. Precondition. Uh, that we will use every time when we are starting a new conversation. And also here is uh, one thing that I also fixed. In regular way, when we are working with ChatGPT, we are sometimes sending some confidential information, like for example, password, login, URL of our application. What if we don't want to actually reveal that we are working with something? In that case, we can even uh, remove it from request part. And I did it here. So if we will go here, uh, I replaced the actual link to the words process and space URL, because now I'm using uh, uh, environment folder. I can reveal you example of that. So here I created a file that contains ChatGPT email password, IP key, and this base URL. So of course you need to put your link here and I will not reveal you my environment because you will see my API key that actually we're gonna use and spend my money. So sorry, I will not do that, but you can do it with your own. So this is just an example. You need to copy paste it, uh, name it just dot env, and it will work and you will able to use uh, okay. And you will be able to use it where it's already let me open here in GPT as process and URL. That's all. And you can do it the same, for example, here uh, as the API key, we are using the same thing. Our API key, it's also environment variable. So we are not directly sending our API key and we even not sending it uh, in GitHub as plain text. So it's hidden. And if you are using some CI CD, you can even override that variable based on something. For example, you have several environments, it's a dev environment, QA environment, production environment, and based on environment, you can override this variable. So it's useful way and it's regular way how in a TypeScript application, you are storing sensitive information and it's work together with ChatGPT, so it's nice. Now, when we have our system message, now we can actually generate another test uh, with system message and et cetera. But it's still not enough, but it's already something. If, for example, I will execute it, I also will store response as a variable. I call it code and I created method called create test. And if it will go to 
to, to this one. So it only uh, storing that string as a file. So uh, previously I tried to create everything and delete all these values from uh, response, but you don't need to do that. It's actually a useless thing. So you can generate the test using this method. If I will execute it, it will generate a file. Okay, let's do it. Okay. I stopped uh, logging all interaction, so probably it's better to return it back and re-execute it one more time. Or we can just wait several seconds because now I, I don't see any logs. So it's you usual thing. Okay, uh, it's a common issue. It didn't pass uh, one minute. We also have that uh, request timeout. So in, in that case, we can just Execute it one more time. Let's do it. It's the same. Once we will have interaction with our chat GPT, it also will populate our chat GPT logs file. And we have also a file for execution of messages. So I will open both of the files. But in a regular way, <laughs> it could be that it, it's not working. You need just to rerun it several times. Okay, now it's passed. And here, just to see that it's a real deal, that it's working, uh, it populated our logs file. So it works the way that in uh, GPT steps, every time when I'm using local conversation or console log, here at the top of this file, I created some kind of util methods. So uh, I'm overriding every console log, uh, uh, posting into array of uh, captured messages. And then at some point of time, I'm using uh, writing to a file and posting all captured message to a log. I'm doing that for interaction with ChatGPT and I'm doing like for execution log. But for now, just let's check what was written here. So we're storing a role of a message. So the first one was a system message, this one, and it contains process and base URL. So we are not actually revealing uh, hide it information about like uh, link, uh, password, and etc. So everything good. Then we are sending second message from a user perspective. We are asking to generate a test. We are asking all the stuff and we are sending, please use this JSON file and check on the contract without exact values of fields. Okay, great. And now we are also saved as a role of assistant. What is our response? This is the whole code base that he generated. He even posted some comments here. And sure, we can uh, go and check. Let me see. Uh, so it should be sent system message. And then we creating the test. Creating test is test full path. And test full path is, let me see, it's folder test. And test file name. It's chat GPT generated test. So let's see, chat GPT generated test. So it populated in the file automatically. And as you see, now we don't have anything incorrectly. It even have good structure of the file. So everything good. And now we can even execute the scenario. And of course, something happened. So uh, at least 
it's compilable. So there is no issues with status code as it was before, but we still have an issue. So something happened on with uh, expectation. So we expected that phone will be anything. So this line, but it was a noun. So we, we faced uh, some issue. And as you see in ChatGPT logs, when we ask ChatGPT to create it, we even uh, ask him to that phone could be a noun. So it was uh, an issue of ChatGPT and we need to fix it. Of course, we can fix it manually. So we can go to our file and here expect anything. We can just put a null value. But I also wanted that ChatGPT will do it for us. And I wanted that ChatGPT will do it for us automatically. So we will not uh, copy paste this code uh, one more time to ChatGPT. I wanted to do it uh, some more uh, intelligent way. So and before that, we need to introduce another way of communication. And I call that way of communication is conversation message. So here is another method. Let's go and check how it's working. So the idea of conversation message is that we will simulate the conversation that we are doing from UI. So we have first message, return, we're sending another message, and etc. And we have the whole history from the first message to the last one. And here I wanted the same. So returning back to our code, here uh, the first thing is to that an input of our method. Now we have messages as an array and the message itself and our messages every time we will push our uh, new message to an array. So we will increase our history of messages. Also I will log this one. Here I will send not the single message. I will send the whole history each time. So if we will call conversation message several times, the first one will be only system and our first input. The second one will uh, contain the system, the first input and the second input. And also we will store the answer. So here, after we get the response, we as a usual uh, store the answer as a variable. And we also push an uh, answer to the message history. And we're pushing that with the role assistant and we're storing content. And because we are sending it as messages, so we will store the whole conversation. So each time when we are executing it several times, we will increase the payload of our post method. So I don't know, after 10 attempts, it will be actually a huge file. So please do not use it too often because otherwise you will get uh, a big token. So uh, here as a response, you have uh, uh, prompt tokens, how much you, you used. So uh, of course, if you will use that conversation history, it will be a lot of tokens. So it will increase your conversation. But uh, positive side here is that ChatGPT will know your first attempt all the fixes and etc., and he will be able to analyze the whole conversation and find the issue and return you a good result. So now, once we got it, the second thing that I wanted to do is that besides of creating the test, I wanted to execute it at the same time. So we introduced a new way, execution of test. Now let me go here to implementation. For execution of test, we also using some additional tooling for clearing logs and etc. But uh, the most important thing and part here is that we are executing test as a some child process. Actually, this is why I use TypeScript instead of Java and etc. Because I wanted uh, to have ability to execute my test that. I return back from ChatGPT without compiling my solution. So for example, in Java, if you will generate some file and you wanted to run it, you need firstly compile it. But with TypeScript, if you will use uh, exact sync, so it's a child process method. And this child process method is able to 
create additional uh, child process inside of your main process. That's why in child process, you can execute your test several times. And after that, I will post additional information into log that will be populated in execution log messages and etc. And after that, I will know, for example, if my test passed or failed automatically after the generation. So now return back, I wanted to execute it. Uh, but now I cannot execute it uh, clicking on a green button. Now I need to execute it using console command because only in console command mode, it will work with child process. So how I'm going to use that? I will add uh, additional tag here. It's called debug. Now I will go to a terminal. So here in a terminal, I need to write a command. I actually have a readme file here. So you have information about how to install Playwright, how to install Visual Studio Code, some YouTube video of getting started and etc. about uh, environment files that I use for hiding sensitive information and etc. So there is a lot of things and we need to use this comment. So it's Playwright test and we are sending uh, which tag we are going to use to execute the scenario. So I'm posting it here, let me first clear the terminal. Now I'm posting it here. We have a debug here. So it should generate our endpoint. In addition, I'm sending additional conversation message and I'm asking also add a print and log status code and body of response. Uh, and also additional inputs that keep in mind that get status code, you need to use method response status, not response status uh, with this one. It's also <laughs> the things that I found uh, as while I'm experimented with my solution, because otherwise sometimes because of his creativity, he used incorrect uh, method inside of a field of the response. So I put it here. Now let's execute it. Okay, I'm clicking it here. So it started and it's actually found no test found. Ah, I didn't save the file. So let's do it one more time. Okay. Let's copy paste it one more time. Here and start execution. So it's running one worker. We'll execution this test using Playwright Runner. And we already can go to chat GPT logs. And after that, we also will have a execution log messages. Now let's wait. We will see it uh, dynamically here in the logs files. If of course, nothing will happen with timeout. Okay. Now we have a, a, a response from my system. He will uh, return back uh, regular code. We asked about printing log status and body response. So now he need to generate an updated test. Let's wait for some time. The most annoying part here is that if it's already passed successfully half of your execution and then it eventually failed with some timeout issue, the only thing here is to uh, change the model, but because currently it's only a part of proof of the con concept, so it's not, not real uh, code base, so I'm not using it on real data. Sometimes it's okay that, yeah, for now it also have an issue, the same that request timeout. In such case, I need just to rerun the scenario. So let's clear terminal, execute one more time and start it from scratch. So here again, we'll, we'll execute the first code, then another and another. So you, you, you need just to know that in a regular way for uh, the cheapest chat GPT, it's failed sometimes. But it's a limit of, uh, because a lot of people are using that, you can move to a more stable version. So 
there is a several versions of a model. You can go from the uh, stable version to the latest version. For example, for, for GPT-4, it will be faster, but of course it will cost more. And as a part of uh, just testing purpose, probably you will <laughs> do the same way how I'm doing that, just to rerun it several times. Okay. Okay, it's still the issue. So I will rerun it one more time. But if you have any questions here, probably it's a good time to ask me something because I will do it one more time. Okay, now we get response from the first request. And as you see, it's different. So we have different comment here. So it's because of creativity, but still we have the issue here. So it's not a uh, valid variant here. He is not checking that it's a null value. So it will be not passed successfully. So it will be an issue. So let's wait for one more. Okay, it's not working, but it's not the problem. I will show you how it will be executed without generation code. So for now, I will comment this one. So let's go and only execute the test. So I will save it. I will clear result. And now we are going to debug the same. Now we need to go to execution log messages here. And now we see that it's failed. So it's failed here because we have phone now. Uh, we have two ways how to check the result of our execution. First, first of all, we have this execution log. It has test failed. We have everything here, but because of some form formatting, it's strange formatting of the text. So if you want to avoid that, there is a workaround. You can go here and use npx play write show report. If I will click on that, it will actually return me here. It's just local host. If we will open that, we will see it's about our execution. We have an attachment and in std out, we have correct variant of logs. So the, the test failed. Uh, we used to execution of this method. Uh, we have expected received. We have this one that phone should be anything, but uh, it's uh, actual now. So we have everything. And now it's look like that if we will send execution of our scenario with a message that it's failed, that we have some assertion error, it looks like that now ChatGPT could be able to fix it automatically for us. So. Uh, we are not going to copy paste it manually. We are going to do it from automation. Now let's move on back. And I will show you the last example. It's self-healing. So how it will work. So we are using the same. So we are using send conversation here. Uh, the same as it was before. We will create test, but now we are using a different method called execute test with self-heal. So if I will go here, there is some uh, logic that you can do differently. So for me, first of all, I will try to 
do it several times. I will just execute the test. What if our test just not stable on a not stable environment? Let's execute it several times. Maybe it will be fixed automatically. I don't know. Maybe each third uh, attempt, it will be successful. After that, if it's still not successful, even after third execution, we will uh, set past as false. So it will be still false. We will go here. So now we decided that we need to ask ChatGPT to fix the test. First of all, we will get execution logs, this file. We will generate additional ChatGPT error prompt. So here for now, it's always the same. I'm writing a message that uh, your test that you generated for me failed. Please write suggestion to fix. Uh, and I'm posting the result of my execution as execution log. So I'm sending this whole file. Then uh, I'm storing it and sending additional message. Okay, thank you for your suggestion. Now, please fix the latest code. So I also used uh, additional method to get latest code. And after that, I'm saving uh, this code that ChatGPT will return for us as a different file. So it will be something like uh, fixed uh, ChatGPT solution. And we will go into execute that fixed version. And if it will pass, then we will output that fixed help. If it's still not working, we will uh, output that even after the fix, there is still error. And after that, probably as an engineer, you can go and you can analyze the logs and you can decide, uh, are you going to update your prompts that we created here? Or you will fix uh, the test uh, from your side. So manually, you will go here to fix test and you will po put phone now manual. So actually this, one, this file, apchat fix test, this is the example of fixed test after uh, self-healing. So he just updated phone to null. And if we will execute this test, let's go here. Yeah, it's still not working, but it's not working for other reason. It's not working because uh, the service itself is intentionally broken. So I feel if I will execute it uh, several times, Okay, on the third time, it was passed successfully because sometimes it's randomly returning invalid birthday and gender. So now you see, so <laughs> at least sometimes this solution is working. So this is the part that we wanted to have from ChatGPT. So we have it here. So we can uh, now to remove debug from this test, put it into self-healing here. Uh, I also increased timeout of play write because sometimes it's need to additional more time. Uh, and now let's go back to our terminal. Let's clear it. <clears throat> and let's go to readme file, copy paste comment one more time. Uh, actually, I don't see the terminal. Let's open it one more time and execute it. Well, now it will work. So every time when we are executing a new scenario, it will clean ChatGPT logs and execution logs, and it will start it from scratch. Now it's doing the same part as usual. It will start in this regular generation of the test. Okay. Okay, it generated successfully. Now we're asking about printing logs. Here, let me copy paste it. <laughs> if it will not uh, be successful execution. Okay, now it's... Uh, generated the test. Now we can go to execution logs. Okay, now we have execution that, that the test failed uh, because our 
phone number. Yeah, because we have a null in the phone. Okay, now let's go back here. So we are writing, I executed test you, you generated for me, it failed, please fix it. And here we sending uh, the whole execution history here from execution log. So now ChatGPT will know that something happened. Something happened with the phone number. So we put everything from here and ChatGPT will try to fix the solution. Let's see. It's still executing because it's executing as a child process. Here you see that there is a lot of logs here, but I also prefer to uh, have uh, some separate files with logs that will be stored. Okay. <laughs> it also failed of a requested timeout, but it's okay. So uh, the only thing here that will be that it will ask about additional role, role user that please now return back the correct variant. It will return it. And after that, you will see here in execution, it will be either thank you execution after fix is correct, or it will go and write, oh, oh no, it's still not working. And it will generate uh, this file for you. So sometimes it has all correct variants, so it will be phone now, and etc. Sometimes still it's still not working, and you do it manually, but you can uh, increase and do a lot of other things. So this uh, initial part that working for now, but I also have uh, one more slide to discuss. So let's return back to a presentation. So let me open it. So once we're done with our workshop, now let's go to the latest part. So what's next? So what else I can add to the framework to increase his capabilities? So first of all, we can uh, add another generative AI. So except chat GPT, we can work, for example, with uh, Google Bard or Vertex AI or some other generative AI tool to do the same. Maybe it will be increased uh, I don't know, quality of responses, maybe it will be more stable because as you see in ChatGPT for today demo, sometimes it's failed because something happened with ChatGPT itself and we are using the stable, uh, the latest stable version, but sometimes it's returned back with timeouts. So if we have such issues, there is several ways. We can just move to another model of ChatGPT or we can use some other generative AI. Second part is that we can use a DSL language for writing tests. What I mean for that? So maybe you already worked with a BDD approach or sometimes it's called behavior driven development. This is the way when you're using some common language, it's called Gherkin, and you are using it as a process for the whole of your team. And we can do pretty the same way using ChatGPT, for example, in your DSL file, you can create everything that was posted just as a file into my examples, but you will put it in one file and it will create a task description, uh, for example, that could be generated by system analyst of your team or business owner or someone else or a quality assurance engineer. Then it will be some examples or for example, maybe it will be not an example, but a folder that will create already created test. Also, it could have some limitations, for example, please use these variables, please use this uh, I don't know, library and etc. And of course, it could have some versioning, for example, requirements of your um, product could change time to time. For example, in first variant, for example, for now, I generated on the test for a get method, but still we need to create post, put, patch, delete, and everything else that will be for our application. Of course, we can provide in DSL language that for now it's get, but please do the same for post, put, patch, and etc. And after we did for DSL language, maybe we can even go to add generation to other code. So we can uh, add generation of uh, documentation, test cases, or even for development of the product. So we can combine, 
combining development, writing code for the service itself, and then generating tests for that service. And it could be executable, and it could be even self-healed. And after that, we can even generate some report for that. And if your uh, business are required some uh, security and et cetera, and you cannot work with, I don't know, public generative AI, maybe you can even create your own language model. You will not use generative AI for some reason, except uh, of security. Probably there could be a reason, for example, your own uh, language model will know more about your business and will help you better than just common uh, generative AI. But still, as you see today, you can use it even as generative AI, that common one, that not trained for your specific data. Because sometimes you're using pretty common operations. So if it's, if it's just uh, any endpoint and you can send example of expected JSON file, it still can work with you. It, it, it can generate tests. If you need it, you can fix it manually and then ChatGPT will use it as an example. So this is all from my part. I have the last slide with information about me. So if you wanted to contribute to that library, if you will have any questions, you can ask me in email or you can connect me with LinkedIn. So I will be happy to have a sync with you. You can ask me something about ChatGPT and et cetera. And if you have any questions now, you can do it also. Probably we have some time for question and answer part. Not sure that you can use chat, but there is also additional thing like question and answer. If you want, you can use this one. Does somebody uh, have any question about the tutorial? Okay, I suppose that's it. Oh, we have the first one. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, we have the first one, <laughs> the first question. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we are sharing the material. Okay, so uh, as I see, it was posted in the messages. Uh, also, there is a QR code in the presentation itself. Let me find it. So, for example, for GitHub, you can use this QR code. And as I'm aware, uh, can you also tell me, will you share some uh, email with uh, additional information to all participants? I hope yes, so you, you, you can check it later. Or maybe I can go and uh, let me check. So I have a folder for everything here, so. Okay, I answered for your question. So probably you will have the link now. Okay. Uh, I think it's recorded. So if someone uh, missed the first part, I don't know, probably you will share the execution, yeah? Yeah, I see that you also post uh, links to GitHub and uh, Drive one more time. Uh, so here, this is a Google Doc. You will can find some useful links. You can find types of prompts that I use, like example of question and etc. So example of instruction, precondition, and how I use ChatGPT for generation tests, so for creation of framework. Also how I set up Playwright, example of generating a basic test, 
and example of improvement. So everything here. So if you want, it's a page with 23 <laughs> uh, pages of uh, prompts for ChatGPT that you can use as some examples that you are going to work with if you will do it by your own. Okay, any other questions? Maybe not questions, maybe you have some information like, did Thank you work with the same or something else? Okay. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> I had a technical problem. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hear that you're speaking. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, it was very interesting. And see you at the live part of the conference. Yeah. Thank you for attending this uh, workshop. Was glad that a lot of people came. Hope that you enjoyed the presentation and good luck with working with ChatGPT and all other things. So see you, bye.